utterly crazy marketing strategies coming up that have enabled my guest to double year on year on year. It's the e-commerce master plan podcast here to help you solve your marketing problems and grow your e-commerce business. Cutting through the hype to bring you inspiration and advice from the e-commerce sector and beyond. Here's your host, Chloe Thomas. Hello and welcome. It is great to have you here. Now, if you're a regular listener, you will know I love being able to shout out a listener at the start of the show. And today I get to do just that. Past guest, listener and awesome member of the Clavio marketing team, Aubrey Harper, has left us a review not on Apple Podcasts this time, but on Podchaser, which is an awesome podcast app. If you've not come across it, check it out. Aubrey was awesome enough to say, great actionable tips that apply to both e-commerce experts and beginners. Thank you for the five stars, Aubrey. Now, in today's episode, we are revisiting another past guest. This time, I am chatting again with Colin McIntosh from Sheets and Giggles, who we last chatted to just before the pandemic hit in episode 259. Uh, Last time, we talked about fast growth, um, crowdfunding, brand, sustainability, getting traffic, building your team and much more. This time we are talking about brand, ex- uh, sorry, range extension. We're talking a little bit about sustainability because it's still very, very central to their, um, their mission. And he's sharing a couple of mad and crazy uh, social, not social media, marketing ideas. Weird is the word we use later. Now, make sure you listen to the end of the episode so you get all his weird, crazy marketing strategies. uh, And you'll also get my own take on this episode. Getting an online business off the ground is not easy. So if you find yourself working late, tackling a to-do list that's a mile long with your fifth cup of coffee by your side, remember, great email doesn't have to be complicated. That's what Klaviyo is for. It's the email and SMS platform built to help e-commerce brands earn more money by creating genuine customer relationships. Once you set up a free Klaviyo account, you can start sending beautiful branded messages in minutes, thanks to drag and drop design templates and built-in guidance. And with e-commerce specific recommendations and insights, you can keep growing your business as you go. Get started with a free account at clavio.com forward slash masterplan. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash masterplan. And now to introduce today's special guest. Colin McIntosh is the founder and CEO at Sheets and Giggles, selling sheets, mattresses, comforters and covers via their Shopify store and Amazon from the USA to the world. It all started in 2018 with a crowdfunding launch. In the first 12 months, they hit $1 million in sales and within two years, they were achieving a $1 million a month. And they've just been named number 309 on the Inc. 5000 list of the fastest growing companies in America. Hello, Colin. Hey, thanks for having me back. I feel like I was just here, but it's been one whole pandemic, hasn't it? (laughs) (laughs) It's been a pretty, pretty epic two and a half years. Um, Congrats on the latest sales data and that Inc. 5000 list. That is quite something to get on. Thank you. It's uh, it's really we just got the, that news yesterday um, from Inc. and and we're able to share it now. And not something that you ever consider when you're founding a company. You're just trying to get your idea off the ground. So it's really really wonderful recognition of our first three years in business. I'm particularly pleased you've achieved it because as a brand who have sustainability as part of the mission from day one, which we spoke a lot about last time. It really is for anyone who thinks you know sustainability is a blocker to success. It's like uh uh-uh, uh, not a chance, guys. That's the opposite nowadays. It's you you're if you're not uh you know, have if you don't have a sustainable product or, you know, great CSR, um, you know, your your brand is gonna suffer and, and people won't support you as much as uh they will your competitors who have that. Yeah, it's a it's a bit of a no brainer, isn't it? And CSR, we're talking corporate social responsibility, just for anyone who Yep, yeah, phil- philanthropy, you know, we just we just donated a hundred uh sheet sets, comforters, uh you know, b- blankets to uh Denver Rescue Mission, which is the, the big homeless shelter in downtown Denver. Just thinking about ahead of ahead of the winter, you know, we me and my uh colleague 
we, uh, you know, loaded up a couple car fulls and brought it over there and just dropped it off. And, you know, he took a picture and put it on our social. But other than that, like it, we don't really blast it out there, probably, probably to our detriment, but it's really fun doing stuff like that. And, you know, S and G, you know, not only have we been able to grow the business, but, uh, last three years, we've also donated over $100,000 to, uh, charity. And so that's been a really wonderful, uh, thing that we've done as well that I'm very proud of. Yeah. It's, um, it's, it's so cool when a business gets big enough that you can help other people. Yeah. I mean, still, we're still very small in the grand scheme of things. Like we, we, sometimes I get feedback from our investors that maybe we're donating a little too much, which is fair, which is fair. Uh, but, uh, I, I really love it. And, it's what gets me out of bed in the morning. No, no pun intended. So, <laughs> um, okay. So, what's been going on since we last caught up? Uh, there's this thing called COVID that happened. It's I don't know if it's affected you guys in the UK, the US. A little know, it's, bit. It's kind of it's kind of a big deal. But so we spoke in February 2020. Two and a half years later now, um, we have more than doubled the business each year, year over year. We have released a slew of new products. We just launched our mattress uh, this summer, our sustainable eucalyptus mattress, which I'm really excited about. And uh, we're releasing pillows as well in the coming weeks and um, a few other items this year. We'll be moving into pajamas by end of 2022, uh, which I'm really excited about. And so great, great product line expansion, company expansion, and uh you know, in terms of me personally, I just got engaged this summer as well. So it's been a lot of movement going on in life and business. And it's been it's been a really wonderful time, despite all the insane challenges of uh, of a, you know, COVID and post COVID world. Congratulations on the engagement. Thanks. Uh, that's very exciting news. And uh, but but we'll stick to the business stuff. Sure. <laughs> and I, sh- I won't ask you too many too many follow ups on that one. But <laughs> the the range expansion you've been doing is that is that because the customers are demanding it? Is it because you always thought the business would go there? Or is it because it's the way in which you're going to keep the growth trajectory going? It, uh, it's a little bit of all three. Um, you know, we have over 100,000 customers now. And uh, we have people who are uh, asking us every day, hey, when are you coming out with pajamas? When are you coming out with towels? When are you coming out with a mattress? When are you coming out with a bed frame, pillows, mattress protector? And it's all because the products that are on the market in a lot of these categories are sub are are below what our customers want. I mean, now they they sleep on our sheets, they sleep on our comforters, they realize how elevated their and, I, and this is this sounds like really trite, cliche corporate, <laughs> but like how elevated their sleep experience can get when you invest in your bed and your bedroom and what you know what they're clamoring for is hey i love your sheets i still sweat underneath my back despite your sheets cooling nature because i i'm sleeping on a foam mattress i'm sleeping on a polyurethane foam mattress it's cheap it's plastic it's oil based and it's trapping heat underneath my back or they'll say i have a mattress protector underneath your fitted sheet that's made from plastic and it's loud it's noisy it's hot, it traps heat underneath me, and it, it lowers the experience of your sheets. Or, you know, uh, uh, people who have sensitive skin, who have uh, eczema or contact dermatitis, um, or who just want, who are, want to invest in anti-aging, our sheets are dermatologists recommended for, for sensitive skin and hair, and they're looking at their towels, and they're like, is there any way that we could put this material in a towel into um, our bathroom. And, and then, of course, the pajamas, people just want to be <laughs> draped with this stuff 24 hours a day. And so, uh, you know, I, I sleep naked. I don't know about you, but I, if, I, I always say if you're not sleeping naked, then you're not really not maximizing the value of our sheets. Uh, but, you know, I think only about, according to surveys we did recently, only about 30% of people sleep naked. 70% of people wear some article of clothing or other. So we want to make sure that that last mile of clothing where you're lying down in our sheets is also made from our material. So we're having a lot of fun with the product roadmap and thinking about all the different things that we can make out of our our fabric. But then from a strategic standpoint, you're absolutely right. We've got over 100,000 people and we we own their their data and, and we don't abuse it. You know, we don't spam them. We don't say buy new sheets, buy new sheets, buy new sheets. And you can only sell somebody so many sets of sheets before they tell you, I have enough. Thank you. And that's just sort of an inherent category weakness that we have to work to overcome with a better 
product mix. And so, you know, we, we actually, uh, over half of our customers come back and buy a second time. It's, which is a really wonderful testament to our products. It's the third, fourth, fifth time that, you know, and, and we don't really want to push that on people. We don't want to, you know, force our sheets or comforters on them. Look, they've got two bedrooms, they've got two beds, they've got three or four sets of sheets. Like they're good. They're good. And that's to and that's totally fine. So we're all so we're also looking at this as the right way to go about uh, retention sales and and not just force our core products down their throat continually. I think I was when you said about pajamas coming down the line, I was kind of like really pajamas that's a whole big old leap but then when you explain it as was it you know such a high percentage of people don't sleep naked yet they bought the sheets because they're good for their skin but then they're stopping their skin from touching it because they've got on a polyester nighty or you know a, a cotton pair of trousers or whatever it's like well actually it's incredibly obvious that you should be creating sleepwear. Totally. And, and that goes for underwear as well. That'll be a 2023 item um, and socks. You know, I don't know how deep we want to get into apparel. The, our fabric, Eucalyptus Lyle Cell, really creates this incredible drape and, and breathable feel. Um, really wonderful for summer. But it, uh, it it also is not our game to get into apparel. So I don't really want to get too deep into it, but I feel like for nightwear, sleepwear, like where we can elevate that sleep experience further, or even your nighttime experience as you're, you know, just hanging around your house, watching Netflix, you want to be breathable, you want to be comfy, cool, you know, that I think that it's a really natural expansion for us. And we get this request every single day. So we're really excited to move into it. Um, but we're, the mattress is taking up all of our time and attention right now, for sure. Yeah, that's a that's a lot more technically complicated a product to put together than yeah. um than sheet sheets are pretty straightforward but yeah the mattress you'd be, you'd be surprised <laughs> but yeah but yeah as yeah. i was saying that i thought i am saying street sheets are simple to the wrong man <laughs> no i mean i mean look it's it's fabric and elastic right so it's so in some level you're right it's a it's a pretty limited build of materials but at the same time it, it still takes months to produce You've got to do it right. You've got to make sure your QA is on point. Uh, you know, the weave that you select, uh, the fabric that you select, dye batches, like everything has to be just so in order for you to produce a really top quality product. I mean, our, we, we, there are other people who sell our same material with sheets, and, and I believe we have a far superior product because of, you know, the care that we take in our manufacturing. But at the same time, like, yeah, I mean, a mattress is definitely a, a few more moving parts. <laughs> it's been it's been about 18, 18 months of R&D on the mattress. So, yes, you're correct. Wow. OK, so with we talked about the, you know, the growth that you've seen over the, the last few years, which has been doubling every single year. Has the way you've gone about obviously range expansion is playing into that. What marketing have you been doing to drive that growth? Is it like a word of mouth thing? Have you been incentivizing that? Is it better advertising? What's your, well, what are you willing to share of your marketing strategy? I always, I always have a hard time talking about our marketing strategy because ours is really weird. Like we, like really, really weird. We, we don't like, so this year in 2022, everybody's getting crushed by rising cost of acquisition, right? Ours has decreased by 30%. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, it's a huge win. And the main reason is that we pretty much abandoned Facebook and Instagram as early as G uh, January. We actually, uh, in January 2021, we spent almost $200,000 on Facebook and Instagram. In January 2022, we spent exactly zero. And that was a a huge eye opener for us because month year over year, our sales in January only declined by 10%, um, which, you know, you don't want to see it decline, but at the same time, it was an experiment we were running and our marketing budgets decreased by 75%. So did you, you didn't redeploy the ad spend somewhere else. You just went, we're just going to see what happens when we turn it off. No, I just cut it. I just said, I just said, I don't, I don't believe that this is, actually attributable revenue. I, I basically said, I don't believe Facebook and Instagram. I think they're lying to us. I, I like, I don't, 
mean that literally as in I, I don't think that the algorithm is designed to lie to you. I think that the attribution that they take is so broad and so wide that so many people who would have converted anyway from your other marketing efforts, from word of mouth, from search, from affiliates, end up converting after having clicked a Facebook or Instagram ad somewhere in that mix. Mm -hmm. And my hypothesis was it was not a core part of that that advertising journey. And so we have since redeployed a lot of that that money, but our marketing budgets are down uh, quite significantly year over year, which is how we've achieved this this CAC reduction. And uh, it hasn't really hurt sales. Um, and that's and that's been I think our biggest lesson is like we've been spending money in the wrong places maybe for a little too long and. Uh, I think the number one strategy that we've done this year that's been different is we've really leaned into our podcast advertising, particularly with one big show that we really focus on um, curating content for as a as a show audience. And so we listen to the show every day. It's got a few million listeners. Uh, we create landing pages in the in the voice of the show. Our Twitter is sort of dedicated to the show. And our organic Twitter impressions have gone from 20,000 in November of last year to in the millions every single month this year uh, with over 4 million impressions in February of this year um, on Twitter. And those are organic impressions. And so if you can figure out a way to get a few million impressions a month for free and you can create landing pages that are tailored to a specific audience that has inside jokes that shows that you are part of the community, your conversion goes sky high, uh, and you get a really loyal, fun fan base that then has really powerful word of mouth uh, multiplying effects. So that's really what we've been focused on is like, I think more cultivating a fun community than we have in the past, which is kind of odd to say, because we've always cultivated a fun community, but we're really leaning into our organic uh, marketing this year. And you said that was podcast advertising. So you advertising on this podcast and then backing up that advertising with the Twitter activity or are you kind of backing up, backing up the advertising with a bunch of stuff, everything. When I say create content for the show, it's a sports show. So not only will we pay, pay them for the ads, and anyone who listening who listens to the Dan Levitar with Stu with Stu Gatt show will know the show I'm talking about, and that we're they're one of their biggest sponsors. Not only will we pay them for ad reads during and before the show, but we also I will call my rep up and I'll say, "Hey, uh, Miguel Miguel Cabrera is about to get his three thousandth hit in Detroit. Does somebody from the show want to fly out to Detroit, watch the game? We'll happily buy you home plate tickets and flights and hotels, and then you guys can talk about it on air." Or, hey, the Stanley Cup's coming up. Does anybody want to go to the game? We bought them Stanley Cup tickets. Or, you know, uh, we uh, we sent people to the NBA All-Star Game, to the Super Bowl. And so uh, we don't plan what the content will be. I just know that they're fantastic at producing content. And if Sheets and Giggles can get in on that and be the sponsor that brings them to these events, that, that gives them that freedom and flexibility to create that content for their audience – we get mentioned on the show constantly and it has been yeah, we sponsored the 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 roast of one of the the head guys on the show last october and i spoke at the roast and he called me a comedy kamikaze on air and that was when i knew it was time to sponsor the sponsor the podcast so it's it's been great and that, that that's been that's been a really interesting strategy that we've done is like creating the content creating the landing pages having the twitter uh a presence that we have and, and we've even hired somebody who's a fan of the show to come join us full time um, in our email marketing team because uh, we have this big audience of emails from the show that's show specific. So I have to ask, how did you decide that a basketball sports show was the one that fit for Sheets and Giggles? Uh, so again, I, I always find it hard to talk about our marketing strategies because I don't think that they're scale. They're, I, like, I don't think that other companies maybe they can learn something from what we're doing i've been listening to this show for 18 years i've been listening to this thing since i was a kid in miami and i used to turn to am radio and i used to listen to it on the way to high school and 
Uh, this show really shaped my sensibilities. And since then, they've grown to millions of daily listeners. They got picked up by ESPN over the years. Uh, they are, now they're you know purely a podcast. So for me, I've always wanted to sponsor the show. They're extremely expensive. So I sort of had to wait until the time was right and we could absorb it into the budget and really lean in. And my team doesn't always get what I'm doing, to be honest. Like they don't really, they don't really get, I, I'm the one who runs this interaction with the show. And the fact that I have such a deep understanding of the people on the show, the personalities, the tone, the content, the sensibilities has, and, and you can't do this for every podcast, though we are trying to scale it with, we're trying to get our team's favorite podcast and have them all build something similar for their favorite podcast. But it is, uh, it is definitely something that I, as a fan of the show, have been able to do pretty uniquely. And it, it's a nice advantage because, you know, you're talking about millions of people who now have this really wonderful brand affinity and, and we've gotten a ton of, ton of sales from this show. It's been great. E-commerce master plan is supported by some of the greatest companies in the e-commerce sector. Here's a reminder of who they are. Do you want more traffic to your online store and to increase your sales? Yoast SEO, the most used SEO tool in the world, is here to help you do just that. It's your personal coach for writing product descriptions that rank high in the search engines. And it takes care of your technical SEO automatically. With Yoast SEO installed on your Shopify or WooCommerce site, you will increase your chances on rich results, quickly optimize your meta tags and beat your competitors. I use Yoast to improve the SEO across all our websites. And you can join me now and install Yoast SEO for Shopify or WooCommerce today. Just go to ecmp.info forward slash Yoast to sign up. That's ecmp for e-commerce master plan dot info forward slash y-o-a-s-t. So ecmp dot info forward slash y-o-a-s-t. Okay, everyone, I have an awesome piece of tech to tell you about. Do you want to maximise your margin on Black Friday? Well, yes, obviously you do. So you should be deploying Nibble. Nibble is a super cool AI negotiation chatbot that you can use to squeeze every last bit of margin out of your Black Friday sales. Use it now to convert, I'm going to wait until Black Friday, customers today. Use it alongside your Black Friday activity to ensure you get the conversion. Visit ecmp.info forward slash nibble to have a chat with nibble yourself and see it in action. That's ecmp.info forward slash n-i-double-b-l-e. They've been seeing margin savings of 27% for existing clients and have free trials available on all their plans. And there's still time to get it up and running to help you improve Black Friday margins and help turn your overstocks back into cash. Try it yourself at ecmp.info forward slash nibble, then click the pricing or get in touch tabs to improve your margins now. It's time for the top tips round. Okay, I love this section because it gives me and our listeners some really quick ideas for taking our business to the next level. So Colin, are you ready for the top tips? Sure. Okay, here we go then. Uh, the book top tip. If everyone listening to this podcast agreed to take Friday off and read a book to make their business better, which book would you recommend? Uh, I think I said last time that I don't read a lot of business books because I don't... I, it's, I don't uh, subscribe to the theory that the secrets in one particular book that being said always always be learning always trying to always try to learn something new recently uh, i've read traction which is a really wonderful book about building your business for scale that was really helpful so i'll recommend traction for sure cool uh the traffic top tip which marketing method do you either prize above all others or think doesn't get the press it deserves i think the little things and what I mean by little things is we have automated banners on our website that change depending on the time of day. So if you're browsing our website after 10 p.m., the banner says, geez, you're up late. Like literally, like, geez, you're up late. <laughs> uh, you know, use code bedtime, check out and get some Z's. 
and you know stuff like that little jokes and the easter eggs in the website uh the one-to-one interactions with customers these th- these things are so so important I-, I can't tell you the amount of brands i've reached out to where you know just recently uh, there was a brand that i thought i had canceled my subscription i had they didn't process my cancellation properly they they so really what i'm saying is personal attention i emailed them i said hey don't ship this out it hadn't shipped yet cancel this order they had their of course their automated customer care we are experiencing high email volume no you're not you're not experiencing high email volume it's august i know you're not experiencing high email volume you're just saying that so you don't have to hire customer care people and then sure enough it shipped out then when i got it i said okay well now i'd like a refund because i definitely canceled this then eight days later somebody from customer care finally email me back and, and it's a big brand this is a hundred million dollar plus venture capital back brand they finally emailed back and they said okay sorry about that here's your refund and just keep the product we don't need it back so now they've wasted product shipping fulfillment refund uh their customer care associates time and now i have a negative brand interaction with them and i never want to do business with them again and so it's the little things like that that don't get enough attention of like how you're actually talking to people uh and a one-to-one you know sort of whisper in their ear way like whether they're on their website your, your website or they reach out to your customer care that needs way more attention and love in 2022 nice i love that um okay the tool top tip maybe a collaboration tool a social media plug in a phone app or just a way of working is there a cool little tool you use that makes you and your team more efficient from day to day uh that's a great question um no uh, eh, which is funny because we use a thousand tools. Uh, I just went through and I canceled thousands of dollars a month worth of software because I just I was like, this is useless. Like we're not we're not using this. We're not utilizing this. My team uses Notion and Asana, which I which they both like. Uh, I use Slack mostly for when I need to communicate, uh, which I really really enjoy. Slack is probably my my easiest thing. Um, no, I mean, I, I'm a big texter. I'm a big phone call guy. Like uh, Loom is probably the best thing we use, which is a screen recorder tool. Um, but everybody knows about Loom. Um, oh, I bet you and, some people uh, don't. Now, some people go, what? There's a, ah, some, yeah, I, that, that's a wonderful screen recorder device that basically is just like five minutes for free videos. Record your screen, record what you're saying, send people a link automatically. Like that is really useful for just capturing processes. Like a lot of people say like, do you have all your processes documented? We have videos of like every every process and that's that's been uh, really great. I like that as well. Okay, the growth top tip. If you met someone today who's focused on growing their e-commerce business from 100 orders per month to 1,000, what would be your number one tip for them? Do you have the capital available for inventory? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and will you will how will you be scaling that up? I mean, you know, if you if you have 500 units and you sell through 300 of them and you want to sell a thousand of them two months later, you can't. How are you going to? So inventory planning, capital planning, cash flow planning, very very crucial from a marketing perspective. Uh, I would say. I would say I'd find out what your customers really love about your product. I'd send them a survey and make them force rank. You know, you can list all your features in a in a Google form or type form and say which two of these features are your top favorite features and rank them one and two. Like which is your first favorite, which is your second favorite. And then really hone in on that in your marketing. Because like for us, I always thought sustainability was gonna be the main, the main, main thing but it's actually the temperature regulation. People who are hot sleepers are obsessed with this. And so that gives me a whole new angle of, okay, well, one, it gives me a lot of confidence in the product to go out and market it to this particular customer demographic. And two, I now know that my content should really be hyper-focused around temperature regulation and cooling sheets, especially in the summer, and really hit keywords and SEO and content and advertising for hot sleeper, night sweats, uh, night sweats from menopause, night sweats from pregnancy, um, longer, longer term, longer tail keywords like that. And so really hone in on your number one value prop, survey your customers, and then go find out where people are and what they want to hear who will resonate with that number one core feature. 
Nice. Okay, Colin, before we say goodbye, could you please let the listeners know where they can find you and your business on the web and social media, please? I'm super easy to find. Uh, I'm Colin McIntosh, CEO of Sheets and Giggles. LinkedIn's really easy. Uh, and then our website is sheetsgiggles.com. There's no and in the URL. I really wish I owned sheetsgiggles.com, but it's just sheetsgiggles.com. Excellent. Thank you. And um, Colin, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. It's been great catching up with you again. You've given us some really fascinating and quite curveball-y advice, which is always good. Uh, or weird. <laughs> we said it was weird earlier, didn't it's we? Weird. Um, it's weird. It's weird. Uh, so thanks so much for being on the show again. Yeah, I know. I had a blast catching up with you. Thanks for inviting me back. Loving that kind of total curveball advertising strategy. So sponsor your most favorite podcast endlessly and kind of piggyback on their community and content. It's essentially a TV advertising strategy, but with a load more in-depth connection to the consumer. Super clever. I, I think that I can see why it would work, but I can also see why no one else is doing it because it's a bit of a curveball. And I guess it's one where You've got to, your boss has got to have a lot of faith in you or you as the owner have got to have a lot of faith in it. Um, lots of other interesting bits there from Colin. I, um, I thought those stats on turning off $200,000 a month of Facebook ads to see what happens. It's a ballsy move, but it is pretty much the only way you are going to categorically work out whether your Facebook ad money is worth it or not. Um, let's not get into a debate on the joys of attribution here. You can get your hands on the notes from today's show, including the top tips and links to what we've mentioned by heading over to ecommercemasterplan.com forward slash podcast, or you can use our new special direct to episode links. Just put ecmp.info forward slash episode number into the URL bar and you'll go straight to the correct page. Once you get to the website, you can also add yourself to our email list so you don't miss out on any of the other things. Things I share to help you improve your business. If you liked this episode, then make sure you also check out episode 408, where we revisited another past guest, Mark from Needle and Thread. Thank you for tuning in to this and every episode of the e-commerce master plan podcast. I bring you a new interview every week because I want to inspire and help e-commerce business owners to succeed and thrive with their businesses, including becoming more sustainable. So if you know someone this show can help, please tell them to listen to the e-commerce master plan podcast. I hope you have a great week and don't forget to keep optimizing. Thank you for listening to the e-commerce master plan podcast. Find out more at ecommercemasterplan.com slash podcast. If you're marketing an e-commerce brand, you already know that data changes everything. More data means more power. And if your email or SMS tools can't handle all that data, they're probably holding you back. That's where Clavio comes in. It's top-notch personalization and segmentation help you send the right message at the right time, guided by unlimited real-time data from your online store and tech stack. Request a demo at clavio.com forward slash masterplan. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash masterplan.